Well, you know, Disneyland was uh, was predicted to be Walt's folly. A lot of people, including his brother Roy, thought that he'd flipped out. I think everyone thought he was crazy, like they did when he said he wanted to do a feature-length cartoon. He sent uh, a number of people back to the uh, amusement convention in Chicago. And they all said it won't work. Tell Walt he's nuts. Uh, you're wasting money on stuff that doesn't generate revenue. How is he going to sell commercial space to people if there's only one place to go in and out? And the idea of fancy landscaping is ridiculous. Well, he's going to put in all these flowers and people are going to trample them. So they were very critical of the whole concept of a storytelling park. The people that Walt had sent uh, came back and told him about it. Harumph was his reply. He said, great. <laughs> if they had liked it, I would have been worried. <laughs> Panic he did not. Hello, I'm Julie Andrews. For 50 years, more than six generations of families and friends from all over the world have gathered together in the happiest of places to experience Disneyland's special brand of magic, filled with fun, nostalgia, fantasy, and adventure. The park has always been very special to me, and having known the man who created this dream, it is wonderful to see how people everywhere continue to embrace it as their own. No other form of entertainment is as universally beloved and cherished as Disneyland by people of all ages, backgrounds, and origins. A trip to this park truly is a homecoming. Disneyland's history is as multifaceted as the park itself, and who better to tell this incredible story with its trials, tribulations, milestones, and memories than Walt Disney himself and all the talented people who for 50 years have lived the dream and helped to make it happen. Here now is the real Disneyland story. All my life, I heard him talk about doing this kind of a park. And as the years went on, from the time I was five and, and until he finally did it when I was 21, uh, the dream just grew from a very humble little thing that maybe would be contained on the studio lot to something quite grand, promising and delivering lots of good things. Now, for my part on this presentation, I've been asked to tell you how Disneyland evolved from a dream to a reality. Now, it was about 1954 that we came up with this, uh, what you might call the climax to the dreaming stage. This was the concept that we hoped Disneyland would eventually be. Now, we made a lot of changes through the years, but this still remains the basic plan. Well, Walt was a, a genius at, at assembling people around him that would stimulate him. and. Uh, he had a whole bunch of artists that were first class. The most finished talent of them all was Herbie Ryman. I was curious why Walt wanted to see me. And uh, he said, uh, Herbie, he said, uh, I'm going to do an amusement park. Roy has to talk to the bankers. We've, uh, we've got to show them. 
we got to show them what we're going to do. And uh, so I got excited, and I said, well, gee, I said, I'd like to see it too. And he said, you're going to do it. I said, no, I'm not. You've known about this for several weeks. Now, why do you wait until Saturday morning before the Monday to expect anybody to do a good job? And he went over and stood in the corner. And, and, and he, he kind of turned around and looked at me, and he said, well, he said, will you do it if I stay here with you? So, of course, Walt, as you know, was a very persuasive person. Now, at the foot of Main Street, about where you're sitting, is the plaza. The plaza, or the hub, is the heart of Disneyland. Shooting out from here, like the four cardinal points of the compass, Disneyland is divided into four cardinal realms. Adventureland, Tomorrowland, Fantasyland, and Frontierland. One thing that he insisted upon was that uh, there be a very, very conspicuous castle because the castle is going to be the symbol of this whole place. Fred Jerger had done a beautiful model of this castle. When I saw it, I said, well, I said, I don't like it. And he kind of looked at the castle and he said, well, and, and, it, and it split, the model split in half, halfway through, and he said, what if we take it and move it around like this? Dick said, now, Herbie, he said, quit playing with that. Put it back, put it back. He said, Walt's going to be here any minute. And, uh, and Walt won't like it. Turn it around, put it back. Walt walked in and everybody went, oh, Herbie, what did you just do? And everybody was waiting for the, the shoe to drop, for Walt to come over and say, I hate this. But Walt looked over and he goes, hey, that looks good. Let's do it that way. Oh, I like that a lot better. So then Marvin and Dick began to like it a lot better. And, but it was always a confused point with us. And, Today, this is facing inside. You're actually looking at the back of the castle as it exists today. The back was the front. Now on a site of uh, 240 acres near the city of Anaheim in Southern California, right about in here, we've begun to build Disneyland the place. I'm the first guy that saw that site, bar none. It was a bunch of orange groves. Prior to Disneyland, this is where I grew up, and this was all flat ground and orange groves. Anaheim was that little town on the way to the beach, and we needed something to establish a good, solid economy, and we were out actively hunting for industrial expansion. Our home was located over about in New Orleans Square, and it was moved. Uh, with another home and it was used as an administration building for the first few years of Disneyland's existence. One of the great things we had going for us in the early days was ignorance. Ignorance meant you tried things because you didn't know better. Walt had the idea of building Disneyland but didn't have the money to do it. There was a lot of people that, that said, he's gone, he's dead, he's done because he had hocked the whole studio. If it had gone down, the studio would have gone down with it because everything was tied up in, in the park. And most of the people that, that I worked with didn't think he was right because everybody was worried about their job. Uh, well, it's always hard to get somebody to see something that's never been done before. Um, it's a big problem because there's no precedent for you to base a judgment on. And so people have to have a leap of faith. And trying to convince people to have a leap of faith, especially people that, uh, you know, maybe accountants or people that have to invest in something, it's extremely difficult because their imaginations uh, don't soar the same way creative people do. I think, you know, my dad believed in it to the point where he felt like he could go sell it and did uh, to ABC, to some others. Walt Disney and Roy Disney were a great team. Walt was a tremendously creative person, 
but also a good businessman. Roy was a unbelievable financier, but had an appreciation for